Don Herbert was a firefighter in Buffalo, New York. On December 29, 1995, he was battling a house fire when the building's roof collapsed. Don was trapped under a pile of debris and nearly suffocated. A local news camera captured firefighters pulling Don from an attic window. By the time his wife Linda and four sons reached the hospital, Don was already in a coma. I remember pleading and begging with him in the hospital when he was unresponsive, just, you know, don't leave me, don't leave the kids, you know, we need you, you know, we need you. You try to get him to squeeze your hand or move a toe or something like that, it just, we were looking for just about anything. Don Herbert did regain consciousness, but a few months later slipped into a minimally conscious state. He could respond to some stimuli, but was unable to communicate. Moved to a nursing home, he was kept alive by a feeding tube. I took him to one neurologist, and I was basically begging him, you know, to tell me, is he going to get better or isn't he? And he just sort of said, well, look at him. What do you see? You see what I see. There's nothing there. And I was just devastated. While Don languished in the nursing home, years passed, and his four boys grew into men. Determined to keep their father in their lives, Linda brought Don to birthdays and holidays, but says he sat slumped in his wheelchair, unaware of his surroundings. What was it like as a kid growing up to see your dad like that? You'd think after 10 years of seeing him hooked up to feeding tubes and different machines that you'd sort of get used to it or something, but I really never did. Yeah, it made me sick to my stomach to go. You know, I didn't go that often because I just couldn't stand seeing him like that. Then one day, two years ago, the nursing home called with shocking news. Don had woken up and was asking for his family. How long have you been One of the nurses lent the Herberts a video camera to record Don's incredible awakening. His first words were a struggle. He hadn't spoken in nearly a decade. (laughs) Family members and buddies from the firehouse rushed to Don's room. Blinded in the accident, Don recognized everyone by their voice. Everyone, that is, except his youngest son, Nick, who was just four when his dad was injured. That's Nick holding your right hand. Right here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did he understand who you were? He still thought that I was really young, and he went to, uh, like, put his hand out over me and uh, to see, how, like, how tall I was. And, like, we just kept telling him to raise his hand higher because he was trying to feel for me down low. How long have I been gone? Quite a while, pal. Quite a while. Ten. Ten years. <laughs> When he learns that he's been gone for 10 years, I mean, he seems heartsick about it. Oh, yeah. You can, the sadness is palpable. He felt so bad. He thought it like he had banded us. He felt so bad that he wasn't there for the boys. Did it feel like an opportunity to say stuff that you never thought you would have? Yeah. Here's my chance to really tell him about me and, you know, try to make him feel proud. Don Herbert's reunion with his family was brief. While trying to get out of bed, he fell and suffered another brain injury. He later contracted pneumonia, and less than a year after he woke up, Don Herbert died. His awakening was celebrated as a miracle, and a family member has written a book about it. But Dr. Nicholas Schiff, a neurologist at Weill Cornell Medical Center, says though rare, he's seen other startling recoveries and believes Don Herbert's story should be a wake-up call for doctors. When I went to medical school like 20 years ago, there were very various kinds of one-liners you get in medical school about you know ways ways of understanding a problem. And the, and the one-liner you get about brain injury was damage done. That you know the, what's done is done. What's done is done. Structural brain injury is unchanging. So with people in, with patients in a minimally conscious state, it's not true to say what's done is done. I think we know enough now to know that there are some minimally conscious state patients where that statement is false.